What's going on there, folks? Good morning. Good afternoon. It is the Earth Master here on this uh, beautiful Monday. It is uh, September 11th, 2023, 11, 11 a.m. California time here and uh, looking at a live shot of the Kilauea volcano. Still showing some activity there with fountaining of that lava there confined to the crater area of the Kilauea volcano. There's a view from the observation tower. They do have a YouTube channel set up here where you can watch this live. Again, looks like a lot of the uh, magma has backed off, or at least the lava flows have backed off slightly uh, compared to yesterday. All right, let's go ahead and check out the latest information statement here from the HVO, which is going to be the Hawaii Volcano Observatory, with their daily update. Well, it looks like they put out a couple updates here today. Uh, the eruption of Kilo West Summit. Caldera that began yesterday afternoon continues with the eruptive activity confined to the down dropped block and at the crater, lava crater up there at the Kilauea volcano. Uh, HVO is lowering Kilauea's volcano alert level from warning to watch because the style of eruption and the fissure location have stabilized. And we chatted about this uh, oh a month or so ago when we uh, were looking at that earthquake swarm and kicking up there. Looks like it was. Uh, finding a way up towards the surface a lot of times with volcanoes uh, that uh, you know the old plumbing system down there could get blocked and it could build up pressure in a new area which could result in eruptive type um, acti activity here at Kilauea volcano but that was not the case uh, it did find its way up back towards the crater area once again where we've seen a lot of the past eruptions take place so that's why they were lowering that from the warning to watch and from red to orange because there is currently no threat of significant volcanic ash emission into the atmosphere. Um, and, uh, you know, for the most part, this is just going to probably continue. Uh, this type of style of eruption is very similar to many in the past here at Kilauea Volcano. Either way, um, you know, this had been paused uh, for oh, a couple months back uh, I think June 16th was the last eruption yesterday kicked it back off perfect timing <laughs> so we'll continue to watch that uh, of course uh, sulfur dioxide SO2 emission rates of up to 100,000 is uh, elevated and we can probably see some of that on the uh, windy map here let me go over and pull this up see if i can find it uh this map or this app has a lot of different stuff in it so2 is what we're looking for so2 emissions right here um some of this i'm not for sure where some of this uh so2 emissions are coming from could be from fires i don't know uh, it doesn't look like there's a lot down here on the big island there's some of it this is a localized activity um but it doesn't look like there's a lot unless this map is off. But even yesterday, 3 a.m. or so, there's a little slight plume coming from the uh, from the area. But general, general SO2 emissions out here are high all over the place. Look at California. Goodness, I think I'll stay inside today, but uh, it's not really going to matter. All right, uh, let's get back here to the earthquake activity, which has died down there at Kilauea Volcano now that the lava is just kind of flowing at the uh, surface there the magma has found its way through the surface uh, up towards the uh, crater area and these will probably again slow down as we've seen in the past to just very minimal uh, earthquake activity and basically what it's going to show on the seismograph stations is uh, fluid movement let me see if i can pull that back up here um that's going to be the volcano hazards let me go back over here and look at this real quick because uh, it is kind of cool to look at. They just lowered that uh, from red to orange. Uh, we are going to look at the... And of course, the inflation has dropped drastically too, right? Now that magma has found its way to the surface, deflation will continue. And that's what we're seeing on the tilt meters out there. Let me uh, pull up a seismograph station here. Show you guys the... Uh, well, of course, that one's not going to work. I don't know why I continue to check it, hoping one day that they'll they'll uh, fix it. Um, so this is the earthquake activity, or lack thereof, 
yesterday, oh goodness, yesterday they were showing, uh, here's a lot of the activity, the earthquake activity that uh, happened right before the eruption there at Kilauea Volcano. And some of this looks like it is fluid movement. Magma movement does trigger a type of uh, um, signature reading. But I was trying to find it here. Yeah, it's in there somewhere, but last night we could see a, a pretty good uh, image of it. All right, uh, so watch for that uh, earthquake activity to dwindle down the tilt meters. Let me show you guys the tilt meters here with UWE. Ooh, that one is not working now. That's the one I've been going to. Is there multiple UWEs? Let me see here. There we go. So notice that uh, woo, we had like a, a pretty good inflation, right? Drastically. And then now we're starting to calm back down following that eruption. And that should continue uh, for a while. Who knows how long this will continue to last. But uh, it is a beautiful site. And they do have a YouTube channel with that uh, information up there as far as the live cam goes. All right. Earthquake activity around the globe. Well, we did see uh, a larger earthquake down here in the Indonesia Islands area. That's a 6.0, 162 kilometers deep early this morning, about 5 or 6 o'clock or so. Um, since then, a little bit of migrational pressure here along this plate boundary with that 5.0 coming into the Myanmar region. It looks like the Myanmar er uh, India border area. This area has been awfully quiet. The Java Trench, so to speak, is... Um, well, it's shown some threes out here, but far as larger scale activity, it's been um, somewhat dwindling. So we'll continue to watch this area for some movement. Uh, basically, just a huge cluster out here once again in our typical zones around Papua New Guinea, Indonesia Islands area, and even still seeing some movement up here off the coast of Japan. Been watching this uh, over the past couple, uh, past week or so, we've seen some swarming out here around the East China Sea with no big earthquake activity yet. But uh, got to remember that pressure, that general plate movement out here across the area. Uh, this is going to be that region of interest right over here. This area is backed up not only by the Filipino plate, which is being pushed to the northwest by the Pacific plate. It's all being crunched in this area. You've got the Eurasia plate here pointing arrows at this area. That is a sign of quite a bit of pressure building out here against the Japan region. The Kurokamachaka Trench remains quiet still. Um, I don't even see any um, any smaller earthquake activity out there. Maybe a 3.7 down into the Japan Trench, but the Kurokamachaka, pretty darn quiet. We'll continue to watch that. Uh, one earthquake off the coast here of Australia. That's a 3.4. New Zealand, what's going on down there in New Zealand? Anything of interest? Let's double check the uh, GeoNet servers here and see what we have. Feels like I'm picking up a little cold. I'm not for sure why. Might just be that time of the year. Hopefully this goes away. I need to stock up here on vitamin C for the winter time. Uh, 2.4 it looks like uh, just five hours ago. Um, nothing big showing up here yet. The uh, seismograph stations here look pretty quiet. For the most part, I'm not really seeing anything of interest whatsoever at all <laughs> across the graphs there at uh, New Zealand. The Alaska area calming down slightly as well uh, into the Pacific Northwest. Still seeing some movement around Mount St. Helens. A couple earthquakes being listed up here on the map. Continuing to watch that. Uh, also down in Northern California, a handful of smaller quakes scattered out and about the land. Southern California. Typical movement down here, except for this little area I'm kind of watching. This has been a swarming area for a little while. Let me show you the last 30 days. We've come up on uh, about 47 earthquakes. Now, that's not a big swarm, but the location, the proximity of these earthquakes uh, is a, of a little concern because that is just off the San Andreas Fault, the southern branch, and that's where we would expect, you know, some secondary movement to take place if this area is just completely locked, right? Completely strained. So this might be of interest here 
in uh, keeping an eye on the San Andreas Fault with that type of activity. Uh, and we're still seeing some of that movement last night and a little bit after midnight. So just keep an eye on that. San Andreas Fault is, uh, I would say, long overdue there in that portion of the state. A couple smaller earthquakes there around the Yellowstone Supervolcano. Let me pull up that map here. Looks like uh, they added a handful of these quakes from, uh, well, we had some yesterday and it looks like some more earlier this morning. So uh, just a slight uh, earthquake swarm there. Let me show you guys the previous day. Uh, we've seen that as well up here around the Maple Creek area. This is a lot more than, than what they're showing up on the map. I wonder if they've uh, added those back up here. Yeah, it looks like they added a handful. I could probably count way more on this first image, though, uh, which is um, that one, the Maple Creek one. There's a lot going on that day. Either way, they're putting some of them up there on the map. Most of the activity been confined uh, to the um, yeah, Madison area, the West Yellowstone, and it looks like a little bit around the Hebgen Lake area. Uh, the rest of the country here, just some general earthquake activity in the oil fields. Nothing of new uh, quake activity goes. Um, Caribbean plate looks about the same. Puerto Rico area tapering off on earthquake activity. Mostly twos out there today. South America region 5.4 earlier this morning along the Peru Chile Trench, about 10 kilometers deep. And the South Sandwich Islands down here rocking slightly with a 5.1, 35 kilometers deep there across that subduction zone. Uh, let's see if we got anything else stirring up here on the Earthquake 3D Globe. Remember, this is now a combination of the EMSC data worldwide. So we will, we will see some of the smaller quakes out here. I know I keep popping this off and, and then putting it back on. That's just because they've been you know, showing some odd earthquake activity, which really isn't happening. And then um, leaving it up on the globe without deleting it from the earthquake catalog there that they put out. And that's the EMSC. But we'll keep them up here because it is important to pay to attention uh, to some of these smaller quakes as well, uh, especially when they're, um, you know, in a, in a um, swarm area. All right, uh, what else? Anything major going on? Doesn't look like it there. Space weather activity popping off with some sea flares. Maybe another M flare overnight, it looks like here. Low grade M flare. Right there, very small M flare, but either way, it looks like solar weather activity is increasing, and that is due to quite a few new sunspots on the Earth facing side of the sun that are getting somewhat dynamic in complexity with amongst the, their uh, magnetic cores of the area of, of interest around these. So, uh, we'll continue to watch that. A lot of these are uh, looking somewhat uh, active. Let me go over here to the la latest magnetogram image. And uh, a couple of these have grown overnight. We do have a couple newer sunspots on the eastern limb. This one's getting peppered with a whole bunch of different magnetic cores in it. Uh, this one as well. So possibly this one down here as well. So we got numerous sunspots to watch uh, for some flaring here in the coming hours and days. 99% chance for a C flare. M flare at 40. X flare around 5% chance. We'll continue to watch that as the SFI is increasing there, the solar flux index, uh, the amount of energy that's uh, out here on the sun is increasing currently with the numerous sunspots. Uh, Aurora forecast, so pretty quiet, not a whole lot going on. All right, let's check out the latest information here on Hurricane Lee as it's getting very close out here uh, to the Bahamas area. Uh, Lee could bring some strong winds, rainfall, and high surf impacts to Bermuda later this week. Interest there should monitor the latest forecast. And, of course, the National Hurricane Center and your local authorities should be of interest there if you're out in that region. The latest cone activity, this gives us a good indicator of where it's going to go. Well, it shows it pretty drastically well off the East Coast. Certain weather models there last week were showing uh, almost a little clipping going on, but it uh, looks like they've narrowed it down. It is currently uh, gaining some steam and momentum. 120 mile per hour sustained winds puts that at a very strong hurricane. And uh, let's see here. Here's Lee. I want to check out the satellite imagery. 
See if it's developed up, oh, starting to develop a, a new eye wall right here, which means it's going to probably gain some steam here in the coming hours in the next day or so. Got pressure dropping down to about 948. Uh, it's pretty significant. Spaghetti models, I think they're all pretty much in agreement that this is going to stay well off the coast. Maybe make a little clip up here into the extreme areas up here in the northeast. Why is this USGS map being weird? Uh, pot potentially, Nova Scotia area might be in the impact. I don't know about Maine. Uh, so we'll watch this area as it gets a little bit closer. But by then, it should be a drastically weaker. All right, um, weather outlook here for today. Got a return of some severe potential out in Texas and New Mexico. 2% chance of tornado pros uh, possibilities out there around Lubbock, Abilene, San Angelo, Big Spring. Plainview, Texas area. Main threat, of course, down in that area with the Gulf moisture, well, some large hail. We've got some hail threats out there and uh, some wind threats as well. So just a heads up if you're out in that region for some potential severe weather. Uh, numerical models, we'll watch that hurricane off here. That's Hurricane Lee down there at the bottom. That is expected to, uh, of course, get caught up with that low pressure system and uh, get taken off towards the northeast so we're not really expecting any major threat there to the states Ooh, look at that we've got a little pressure out here across the west coast um towards the third week of uh september so that looks like maybe a, a little pattern change for us out here Let's see what we got right now we're supposed to supposed to cook it's supposed to be up around 100 degrees or so coming up this week upper 90s today underneath the high high pressure influence out here across the uh, west coast and into canada but i want to see where that trough is it looks like a little bit of troughing developing here um the 20th into the 24th it looks like so maybe we'll get some rainfall or at least some cooler temperatures i am ready for that uh, but for the rest of the country here uh it looks like that dominant high pressure system up here in canada is just going to sit around for a little bit it's been lingering up there all summer and uh, looks like it wants to head in there to fall as well. So we'll keep an eye on those uh, patterns out there. All right, uh, anything going on across the uh, seismograph stations? A little bit of activity there at the Hot Caves Hawaii station uh, close to the uh, Kilauea Volcano. Yellowstone, a little slight activity, but uh, these are all generally small microquakes. The rest of the graphs look pretty quiet for now. Of course, we'll continue to watch and report back on any changes. Looks like a 3.1 that was showing up there on the Hot Cave Station just a couple minutes ago there. It's 11.24 when it came in. It's 11.29 here. Uh, 3.1, 35 kilometers deep down around Pahala. All right, folks, have a good day. Stay safe out there. Enjoy your Monday. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later tonight. Take care.